Joe Biden had one thing he had to do tonight, and he didn't do it. Can he run for president in 2024? Okay. Oh, my. Oh, wow. All right. So last night's debate performance from Joe Biden was so terrible that every Democratic commentator, every operative, even a Democratic surrogate, even Joe Biden's favorite political morning show questioned his ability to continue on as the Democratic candidate for president. So I'm going to go over some of the reaction to that. So last night, we streamed, me and a few people streamed the uh, debate live on Twitter uh, to Matt Bender's account. I will upload, if you care to put yourself through it again, <laughs> just to see our reactions, I will upload the full version of that. Uh, again, our reaction to the, the actual debate. I'll upload that to Patreon. There's potentially copyright issues with, with CNN, which is why it isn't on the YouTube page. So if you're Patreon... Um, I'll also see if I could put it on the member page on YouTube, though, again, YouTube may be weird with that, but it'll definitely be on the Patreon page. So I'll link to that uh, page below the video, the rationalnational.com slash join. Um, we also, but we also streamed our reaction to uh, the post-debate reaction after the debate last night, which is on the YouTube channel under live. You can check it out there. But I'm going to go over just a lot of the reaction from Democrats to Joe Biden, because I have never seen a reaction like this to a party's own candidate. Like you can maybe think back to 2016 when there were Republicans worried about Trump and his ability to, to win against Hillary Clinton. But this is a, on another level when it comes to the reaction to Joe Biden from people that are close friends of Joe Biden saying publicly that they were worried about him being the candidate. So I want to start just by showing you this not this, <laughs> I'm showing you this. This was the VP debate. If you were uh, around back then, back in 2012, I remember this debate because Joe Biden did very well against uh, Paul Ryan here. And I want to show you this because I want to show you, imagine this wasn't Joe Biden at the time. Like he's, he was catching him on lies. He was laughing at how ridiculous he was and all their policies. Compare that to this. Imagine this was Joe Biden. Back in 2012 in the VP debate. It wouldn't have gone so well. This was the Joe Biden that existed last night. This. This Lisa Simpson. <laughs> from Trent here. This was Joe Biden the entire debate. It wasn't even about lack of energy. That, that was, of course, a part of it. It was just... It, it was everything. He was incredibly tough to it was it was hard to even know what he was saying most of the time and this wasn't about his stutter we, you know he's had a stutter for a while i i have a stutter that that isn't the problem here the problem is his inability to even have a coherent argument he is the president and he is unable to make coherent arguments against a madman so it's important to be clear Donald Trump didn't do well last night either, but he was able to stay out of Joe Biden's way, essentially allowing Joe Biden to destroy himself and make him, his terrible performance, the center of attention. Trump, if there's one thing Trump did well last night, it's that he didn't go after Biden very hard because that could have potentially made Trump the story and made Trump come off as a bully. Trump, for the most part, stayed back, stayed out of it, and just allowed Biden to say shit that didn't that wasn't coherent and just completely lacked any energy and his voice as well he was, apparently has a cold or something but he voice was just not there and i'm going to get to by the way an example later of when biden's voice recently was very good <laughs> to the point where this almost sounds like ai but uh that'll be a little comedy later i want to show you here is um just to give you a proper example, because I'm not going to go through the whole debate. I'm not going to break the whole thing down as I, I, I can't put myself through that again. I'm sorry. But I will show you an example of essentially how the debate went. This is a good example of how the whole thing was. Uh, was. Continue to strengthen our health care system, making sure that we're able to make every single solitary person uh, eligible for what I've been able to do with the uh, with, with, with the COVID, excuse me, with um, dealing with everything we have to do with uh Look, if 
We finally beat Medicare. Thank you, President uh, Biden. President Trump? Well, he's right. He did beat Medicare. He beat it to death, and he's destroying <laughs> Medicare because all of these people are coming in. They're putting them on Medicare. They're putting them on Social Security. That's how it went most of the night. Biden unable to really have any coherent argument. Then Trump would latch onto the thing that would allow him to then change the subject to, you know, in this case, the border, immigration, as a way to uh, try to push what he views as his strong point forward. Like this, and there were even points. I mean, you could argue Biden set him up there. I'm not even sure what Biden was arguing. We defeated Medicare. What? What does that mean? <laughs> Again, who knows what that means? But there was another point, and and uh, Matt Bender discussed this as well last night, or he brought this up, where um, Biden was, it was a question about abortion. This is a strong point for Democrats, because they are pro-choice. The vast majority of the country is pro-choice. Support Roe v. Wade. And Biden, for some reason, brought up the border. Like, <laughs> this is one of the issues where he is weakest on in terms of polling. Brings this up, and then Trump latches onto that, and then makes that the topic, as opposed to abortion, Trump, one of Trump's weakest uh, points. It, it, it was, it was a, you know, I want to say, I was going to say a master class, but it wasn't a master class in anything. <laughs> it was just, it was, it was an example of just two people being so terrible, but one being so much more terrible that it became the story. Because let's be clear, Trump lied the entire time. He used uh, Palestinian as a slur against Biden, which was disgusting. And just had, you know, again, Trump is terrible. He was terrible. But Biden was barely a person. So this gets to uh, this point here, which I think is great from Van. Remember this America. We uh, remember this America whatever. <laughs> Well-articulated lies always beat truth. And actually, I think this point from this reply is even better. I wouldn't say well-articulated, but more like confident rambling. Yes. Trump's confident rambling beats Biden's truth. The moments that Biden was able to get a point across or try and make a point, and, and I knew what he was trying to say because I understand what his positions are. When that was happening, the even though Biden was telling the truth, it doesn't mean anything if Trump is coming off as more confident and clear in his answers. Now, let's get to some reactions. So, again, this is immediately after the debate. Here is uh, CNN's John King. Minutes into the debate, and it continues right now. It involves party strategists. It involves elected officials. It involves fundraisers. And they're having conversations about the president's performance, which they think was dismal, which they think will hurt other people down the party in the ticket. And they're having conversations about what they should do about it. Some of those conversations include, should we go to the White House and ask the president to step aside? Others are, other of the conversations are about, should prominent Democrats go public with that call? Because they feel this debate was so terrible. Uh, they do say, in, in moments in the debate later, the president got better and got his footing. But then at the end, even his closing statement was a little halting. The contrast between the two candidates. Let me be clear. None of them, and a lot of Republicans, don't think Donald Trump had a great night. Donald Trump broke the fact check machine more than I can count tonight. That will be on the record as we go forward. He refused to answer some very specific and direct questions about his conduct, about January 6th and what all. So that will be dealt with out there. And sometimes there's a parallel universe between the political elites and the American people. It'd be nice to see what the voters say. But I can tell you, it started minutes in. It started with the first couple of answers. And it has continued throughout the night from a, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, to what do we do about this? I and it involves very senior people in the Democratic Party, including elected officials, saying we have a problem. And just to co-sign what John is saying, I mean, the panic that I am hearing from. It, again, it was universal. That panic was apparently universal between all these Democratic commentators and their sources within the party at high levels within the party. I also want to say, I'll get to later on, Biden has apparently responded, at least through an aide, to the worry about his debate performance. You can see I didn't lead with that because <laughs> it's 
not very encouraging. But I will get to his reaction. Here's a uh, Nicole Wallace. And I think what when you adds, say conversations happening, what do you mean? I think people are talking. I think the conversations range from whether he should be in this race tomorrow morning to what was wrong with him. I mean, he has a cold that came out. Our own Kelly O'Donnell reported that a few minutes in. But exactly what negative you COVID test about a cold, right? Yes. Um, so those things were, I mean, the reason reporters were reporting on the cold was because of what you articulated. I mean, the voice was very, very soft. Um, it wasn't the Joe Biden performance of the State of the Union. No. Um, it wasn't seizing a moment to get on the offensive on immigration. It wasn't Joe Biden on the offensive on January 6th. It wasn't Joe Biden on the offensive on abortion. His two you know, shining issues. Um, it was exactly what Chris Hayes predicted. It was Trump moderating, not just tonally, but sounding less crazy as he lied as often as he breathed. The debate moderators did not fact check one thing, but they did give Joe Biden time to fact check and he didn't do much of that either. Um, it is not our job to tell people what to see and hear, but I think what I heard from a Biden aide is we can't necessarily spin too much what people did see in here. So it's important to note that, you know, these are all people, including myself here, that, that we are very engaged in what is going on, very engaged in these individuals' positions and their strong points, their weak points. So how we view this debate may be different than how the average person views the debate. I was seeing, I don't know, one or two posts online where there were like watch parties and in one case, half the people thought Biden did fine. So look, the, it's possible, it's possible <laughs> that this debate was fine for Biden, for the public. But I've just based on performance alone, again, I'm not even looking at the policy or the answers, which there are many issues to discuss there. I'm not even looking at that. I'm looking at the performance. I'm looking at, does this man appear like he can lead anything? Does it appear like he can, you know, get up in the morning, put his own clothes on? Like he, he reminded me a lot, actually, of how my grandmother looked a few months before she passed of dementia. So look, that's just, that's how I viewed it. Maybe that had that put a bias on me viewing this debate and how I viewed it, but he, there is old and look, Bernie Sanders, I believe is a year older than Joe Biden. Bernie Sanders sounds great. Looks great. Is not this. Donald Trump in this debate, even though he's only a few years younger than, than Joe Biden, appeared like 20 years younger than Joe Biden, just based on delivery and performance, demeanor, all of it, just the, 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 the visual and the audible aspect of it, separate from the actual, um, you know, substance. So another one, like this, this is crazy. New York Times columnist uh, Tom Friedman who is a personal friend of President Biden's, calls for him to drop out of the race. I watched the Biden-Trump debate alone in a Lisbon hotel room, and it made me weep. I cannot, I cannot remember a more heartbreaking moment in American presidential campaign politics in my lifetime, precisely because of what it revealed. Joe Biden, a good man and a good president, has no business running for re-election. Personal friend. He must bow out of the race. And this was consistent among all New York Times opinion pieces. Biden cannot go on like this. I'm hearing high anxiety from Democrats over Biden's debate performance. Is Biden too old? America got its answer. Again, New York Times opinion piece that you, you usually see at least one person with a different opinion here, but it's impossible to have a different opinion because we all saw what we saw. And this is the polling from uh, CNN and SSRS from last night. You could see the, the 2020 debates. Biden clearly won those, 60%, 53%. And then first debate last night, Biden 33% to Trump at 67%, a higher percentage than Biden got in either of the two debates in 2020. 
There's also this. So uh, God help us. 12 writers rate Biden's performance at the first debate. And they all rated either draw, saying, is there a winner here? This was a disaster for America, to uh, Trump won. Of course, not a single person thought Biden won. Vox as well, from Eric Levitz. Joe Biden should save his legacy, legacy by ending his candidacy. The case for somebody, anybody else. <laughs> this really was... If you watched our post-debate analysis last night, or go watch it, we just discussed, like, anybody... Anybody. Kamala Harris, I guess, would have to be, like, she would be the most logical replacement just because it, it, she's the VP. So it seems like the, the, the safest way to do this without pissing off the most people is just go to what the obvious choice would be, is the person next in line. I don't think it's the best choice. I think, I don't know. I don't want to, you know throw names out there because I don't think we're not going to see another primary race, obviously, that the primary is over. So this is really about if this were to happen in, again, I think we are sort of wishful thinking here. I think it's very unlikely that Biden will allow a process for him to be replaced in any way. It would have to maybe go into the hands of the delegates. They would all have to conspire to do it. And even then, uh, I'm, I'm not you know, up on all the rules here in terms of how that process works. So maybe there are barriers to that. I'm sure there are barriers to that. But the way, the only unifying person I could see them getting behind really is Kamala Harris because she's the vice president. But we'll get to Biden's response uh, shortly here. So I'm not going to, I don't need to keep playing all these clips, but Nicole Wallace simply saying the rules are, actually, I'll play a bit of this because uh, the rules are circulating. That you're talking about, Nicole, in terms of whether or not um, President Biden's position on the ticket is safe. David Pluff saying, of course, that's not going to happen. Like, that's a that's a yeah. fantasy saying that's, you know, you either need to right the ship or do the thing that's not going to happen, which is to replace him on the ticket. I, I mean, I I don't think that's an option. But the fact that people are talking about it if it's not an option, only seeks to further weaken the perception, Correct. weaken the standing of, of President well, Biden. The question is whether you're hearing that it is an option, that there well, is some viable legal. means of I mean, I, I spoke to a, an election lawyer. It is legal, and the way it happens is Joe Biden releases his delegates ahead of the convention, and you can't do it on the first vote, but I think on the second vote, they can go somewhere else. So it is legal. It is possible. And I think when people say it won't happen, it's because they think Joe Biden would never do it for the reasons Joy already articulated. He's the only person who beat Trump. And he believes, and he has some reason to believe this, that he's the only one who can. And to give to, to amplify that. Which is so, so wrong, so sad, so depressing that Biden thinks he's like uniquely situated to defeat Trump is insane. I see back in 2020 why people could have could make that argument because you're talking about a pandemic people wanted to feel safe with someone they're familiar with i could totally understand back then people thinking biden safe choice he maybe could be the only person back then even though i don't think this is true but i could see the argument biden could be the only person that could beat trump because he's the safe choice he was vp before there's a pandemic we need help get somebody in there who, who we know i get that argument it's now 2024 it's no longer the pandemic year. This is a different time. I think Biden is uniquely positioned to be one of the only Democrats who could lose to Trump because of who he has become. It, it, he, he cannot, he can't campaign. He simply cannot campaign. So, I hope there are serious conversations here. Again, it, it unfortunately would have to probably go back to Joe Biden. Joe Biden would have to decide to concede and to allow this process to move forward. I don't, I don't believe, from my understanding of it, that there really is a way to simply take power out of Biden's hands unless 25th Amendment and he loses or he, he has to step down as president because of the VP and the cabinet around him telling him it's time to go. And the chance of that happening is, is almost zero. Just simply the way that Democrats never challenge power. 
the chance of them challenging power here to Joe Biden, challenging his power, <laughs> I just, I find it very hard to imagine. It's what they should do. It would be the right thing to do to avoid, to do what you can to avoid a, a Trump winning disaster. But I don't see them doing it because they have always given in to power. So there's, look, I keep playing all these, but it's, it's all saying the same thing. Um, PBS here saying, uh, remember, he is still not officially nominated. Again, just giving hope here to people that would like to see Biden not be uh, the candidate. Claire McCaskill is a surrogate and goes on a long, this is a four-minute spiel, essentially saying it, Biden is not up for this. His own surrogate saying this on television after the debate. And this morning as well, by the way, she was on, I think, Morning Joe, saying th the same thing, basically. It's wild. I have never seen anything like this. Uh, this is David Pluff. Again, Rachel Maddow referenced him earlier, but um, Biden had a couple of good moments. Uh, but the concern level is quite high. But he did say DEFCON one moment. <laughs> so I just want to play that part. Well, I think consistent with your reaction, Rachel, and others on the panel, it's kind of a DEFCON one moment. Um, I do think Lawrence and Chris give a very important caveat. Listen, I've been... Yeah, they're worried. Here we go. Joe, uh, Joe Scarborough. Again, he goes on forever. Drones on for four minutes about, how, oh, I love Joe Biden. Joe Biden, he's a great president, the best president of my whole life. But let's just get to the point where he uh, makes the ultimate point. Can we know Joe Biden can govern? Mm -hmm. And again, I'll debate that issue with anyone, and I will win. I will destroy anybody that wants to debate Joe Biden's record over the past three and a half years. He can run the White House. He can run the country effectively, d despite the barrage of lies that constantly come at him, like Donald Trump's lies last night. But can he run for president in 2024? Donald Trump lied over and over and over and over again. And Joe Biden couldn't respond to any of those lies. This is Joe Biden's favorite show. This is the reporting behind the scenes. Several reports have discussed this, that much in the same way Trump watched Fox and Friends every morning, Joe Biden watches Morning Joe every morning. It's weird that this gave me the most hope. <laughs> that like, forget what you know. Maybe his wife is telling him. Forget maybe what Kamala Harris is telling him. Uh, though again, I'd be surprised if they're challenging him either. But the fact that Bi that I know Biden watches this and he is seeing this, maybe, maybe there's a hope <laughs> that this is gonna wake him up and realize, God, I did terrible. I can't continue on. I cannot defeat Trump. Someone else must take over. But knowing Biden, knowing the way he's operated, knowing the ego of the man, I don't see it happening. Um, this is a fun moment. Governor Gavin, uh, Gavin Newsom, who was one of the uh, you know spin room individuals uh, defending Biden, here's his reaction to a, a interesting question. Are you going to be the next Democratic nominee? No, we are, we, our nominee is Joe Biden. I'm looking forward to voting for him in November. Uh, he's going to be our nominee. Because you know that everyone are talking about you as a possible nominee now. Thanks. Are you enjoying it? We're going up here? Thanks, guys. <laughs> okay. Some people are treating this like uh, that, that's his answer while he's glowing. I don't think he's glowing. I think he's, he's it's sort of like a, a nervous smile. I don't necessarily think he's like, oh, I'm so flattered you asked me about that. I just think it's like an it's an awkward question to ask when you know Biden did so terribly. <laughs> and you also know you would love to probably be in his position. Um, but I don't think he's glowing because of the attention. It's just more it's just more awkward. Uh so here is the response from uh from Joe Biden. Kayla here. Kayla, I, I don't want to say this last name because I'll get it wrong. But uh, senior White House correspondent for CNN. New 
as just reported on CNN, not only does uh, Joe Biden not plan to drop out, Biden remains committed to a second debate in September, an advisor tells me. The most likely scenario here is that all of this blows over. That Biden's going to sit back and, and realize he's been in politics for a while. He knows things just go away. He'll sit back, wait, allow this to go away, <laughs> and then continue on, and uh, nothing will change. That's the most likely scenario. It's also very likely that you're not going to see a whole lot of appearances from Joe Biden because, or maybe, maybe you'll see more and they'll just ensure he's geared up and full of caffeine for those as a way to kind of co combat this idea that, that he is, uh, you know, too old to be president. So it, they could go, they could go either way. If they think they could combat this narrative, then they will do that. If they think that they can't, then they will hide him. Last point, this I saw shared, and this is a, a clip from Aaron Rupar. Aaron Rupar often shares clips from, from cable news. He's not someone who edits videos, is my point. This is not edited. This is Joe Biden's real voice, for, at least from my understanding. <laughs> so this is back, as, as you see, during Christmas. Listen to his voice here. As I write, imagine if Biden hit the stage with this voice, 50-state landslide. Funding the government isn't a great achievement. <laughs> it's a bare minimum of what we need to get done. But in these times, a bipartisan cooperation is worth recognition. So I want to thank Senator Schumer and McConnell and Speaker Pelosi for getting this done. All he needs to do there is add some sunglasses, and he sounds like a badass. <laughs> like, if that's the voice he took the stage with. So apparently he, he was sick there. Obviously, he was sick. And he sounds amazing. But he was also sick last night and sounded terrible. So he needs to get whatever this illness was for the next debate and maybe save his campaign in the process. But uh, yeah, by the way, I'll link to this below. Oh, I'll find Aaron Rupar's original tweet of this because there are multiple clips from this appearance of him speaking this way. So either there was a mess up on in the audio process where it was uh, it was pitched low for, for whatever reason or this was his actual voice. And I actually, I remember, I vaguely remember this, so I think this is real. <laughs> Again, I'm not 100% certain, but because Aaron Rupar posted it and he basically just posts cable news clips, I, I'm I'm definitely certain this was posted to cable news the way it's the way it's appearing. It just maybe there was a weird process in uh, the way the audio was processed. But I am, uh, I, I'm just, I'm both worried and also sort of relieved that there are people that are within the power of the Democratic Party, within the White House, within cable news, operatives, commentators, Democrats that are not ignoring this any longer, that are acknowledging what we have all been seeing for a very long time and was just shown to an extreme last night. Finally, there is some acknowledgement of this. That's the first step. The next step is figuring out if there is a way to potentially replace this man and avoid a disaster that would be a Trump victory.